Good morning, mother people. You see, I still got eyeballs in my eyeballs. It is six in the morning and look around, nobody's here. The past three years, this has been my main transportation for work. Going to work. This is my office in the morning. I'm pretending like I type. So in 2022, I decided that it's about time that I live my dreams of living in multiple cities. And I just had this vision. But since then, I've taken 212 flights. That's about like seven months of just flying within that time frame. But it's been quite the experience and I just wanna share with y'all what kind of life it's been using a plane as my main source of transportation to get to work and let's get to work. Back in LA now. For International Airport, LAX is pretty lame if you traveled a lot. They need to upgrade. They're making some kind of like monorail or something that's gonna help connect all the terminals together. But this place still sucks. All right, back at the JK office, but somehow I just realized it looks more like the Kinja's office because I'm wearing Kinja's merch and we have the Kinja's uh, arcade. Man, my mind is kind of going weird after traveling, but yesterday, I posted this on Instagram and I asked y'all to ask me questions so I can answer any of your curiosities that you have about my lifestyle and how I've been doing. If you're not following me on Instagram, then what are you doing, huh? Jojitsukawa, go and follow me, you funny animals. Okay, first question. How do you deal with the stress from traveling and not being snappy to people around you? Being sleep deprived and like living this fast paced environment can really take a toll on my mood. I know several entrepreneurs and freelancers like myself who just don't talk about issues that much because we definitely feel judged. We should be grateful for the life that we live and not complain about anything. Overall, I feel like we feel like the ones that should be fixing the problems, not causing the problems, especially because we don't wanna burden our friends and family. But if we don't attend to this, it's definitely gonna weigh us down. I know way too many people that burnt out from this, broke down from this, and unfortunately some have passed away from this lifestyle. And no matter what, I don't think bottling up anything is good for anyone, which is why I'm working with BetterHelp as a sponsor of today's video. First, you go to their site, use my link, betterhelp.com slash Jojitsukawa. Take a quick survey and they're gonna match you up with a professional. So the best part of this is if you're constantly on the go, you can do it from your phone, your computer, and whatever's comfortable to you. So let BetterHelp connect you to a therapist who can support you through your hectic life. Visit betterhelp.com slash Jojitsukawa or choose Jojitsukawa during sign up and enjoy a special discount on your first month. So without further ado, let's just start going through these really quick throughout the day. Okay, is it tiring? Yes, but it is super rewarding and I'll get to that. Do you get jet lag? I think I do because right now the time difference between LA and Hawaii is three hours. They don't have daylight savings over there. So it changes between two hours and three hours. I do notice a difference when there's a two hour difference. I don't feel that effect. But when there's a three hour, it's pretty crazy because like, let's say I wake up in LA anywhere from like six to 7 a.m., right? Then that means in Hawaii, that's like 10 already. And then it's the opposite too. When I'm over there, that's like three in the morning, four in the morning. What I like to do is when I go back to Hawaii, since like I'm like waking up super early, that's when I get to do all the fun stuff, like hiking with my friends, watching the sun rise, maybe even surfing. That's like one of the best things right now, especially during summer. It's unfair how warm the water is. Like I grew up here in LA and the water's always ice cold. And in Hawaii, the summer is like a jacuzzi water. So you'll go out there, the water's warm, you watch the sunrise and you're just like, this is crazy. And how long do I stay? Well, usually around like three to seven days-ish is kind of the window I'm in a city for, and then I move on. I'm not gonna tell you exact dates though, because I got stalkers. How do you pack? This is a good question, so let me show you. Shout out to the homie Chef Kali. Um, he, if you guys have seen it, Hawaii's only, he has a really cool YouTube channel. He makes food, he fishes, he does catch and cook spear fishing and all that. But David actually won this at a pokey making contest. 
but he just left it at the Hawaii house for us to use. Um, but, you know, I've been on a diet and I just make all my food. That's my shabu meat. I just pack a bunch of beef jerky, uh, some nuts, some more beef jerky. I have an ice pack there. So over the years, I've learned how to pack extremely lightly. I've kept this backpack. It's been in my life for maybe 12 years now. Like it's lasted so long and I'm just so used to the compartments and everything. This fanny pack, I have multiples of the same one because I love it so much and it's cleaner. I just use things until like it gets completely destroyed. But yeah, I gotta have my laptop, right? I have my notebook, shout outs to HV333 Brands Good from Matt Vincent. Extra forks, napkins, you know, got my keys, your essentials. I gotta get my neck pillow, right? Gotta trim my freaking nails, right? And I know I'm coming from a warm tropical place, but always get one of these, which is called a sweater because it gets cold in airplanes. You can't smoke on airplanes, but I got a cigar for later. Huge hack, okay? You asked me about hacks. So they're gonna make you dump your liquid, right? But before you get to the airport, fill up your water bottle all with ice because they're not gonna make you throw away ice. Ice is allowed. And then when you get inside, there's all these water fountains, all that stuff. You fill up your bottle. You don't have to pay like $12 water. Okay, I admit I've done that multiple times because I would forget my bottle, but that's because I got ADHD and you guys don't. So if you're not a forgetful person, nine out of 10 times, I'm always with my bottle. And this has lasted me maybe a year now or maybe a year and a half. Hey, that's pretty good for me. That's one of the best hacks ever. I know it sounds like so simple, like duh. A lot of people just don't bring their own like water uh, pitchers and canisters and canteens. And I don't wanna talk about water no more. This is boring. Bare necessities. So you might be thinking, well, okay, how about toiletries? How about clothes? How about um, extra electronics and wires and things you might lose? Okay, so here's my hack to this. In every single place I have access to, whether it be a house, a friend's house, a freaking office space, whatever, I leave a trail of toothbrush, toiletries, clothing, whatever, because I just don't know. Like, I don't know whose house I'm crashing at, my house, my friend's house, Am I gonna need to be on the road? Are we gonna stay at a hotel? I got so tired of going to the store every single time to buy stuff. So what I did, I just got everything in bulk and I just started planting things everywhere. And I got this idea because number one, I kept losing my uh, phone charger. So my friend was like, you could buy more than one. And I'm like, oh yeah, but you know, I'd rather be responsible and have the right, you know, like habits. Cause I keep losing the phone. And I'm like, nah, you know what? Work with who you are. I just buy 10 phone chargers and I just have it everywhere. In my backpack, in, you know, my office, at my house, in my car, wherever, right? Cause if you lose one, there's another one and you just keep buying, you just have it everywhere. And it's kind of nice because I don't have to pack any luggage but what do i do when i go international so that's a whole different story yeah i have to pack at that point but i pack as little as possible because i'm pretty sure when i'm traveling i do want to go shopping and i want to buy something from there sometimes i'll wash clothes in the hotel like i would go into the shower and with my clothes on put soap on it wash it and then wring it out dry that out so i don't have to bring like two thirds of the clothes that i want to it sounds homelessy, but that's what I do. And if something needs to be bought, I buy it. Cause usually outside of America, clothes and things are so much more cheaper. So it's like, so what? I forgot my socks. I'll buy a new one. I'm balling like that, baby. Speaking of socks, Fear Everyone socks are available now. They sold out like as soon as we posted it, but it's links in the description box. Will you ever do a meet and greet in Hawaii? Why do we need to do a meet and greet if we already met at Costco, I love Costco. See me at your local Costco. I'm there all the time. Hawaii, California, Nevada, Costco. Mana Parker. Speaking of Costco, did you guys see that video of Bart dodging Chinese people? I gotta dodge Chinese people. This is the Costco haul, check it out. What kind of boss buys liquor for their employees? Uh, uh, no boss, if EDD is watching right now. We got beef jerky, we got snacks for them to keep their bellies full. They love Red Bull. We should be sponsored by them. And tons of water, 
I know I should get like a water filter system to save the environment, but they like bottled water because I said so. I'm drunk as hell, but how the fuck it don't get tiring because my home is Hawaii and that shit get tiring from traveling and like prices. <laughs> It does get tiring, but I actually really freaking love to travel and five hour flights get me focused. I can read, I can do some work. I could get some like writing down. I can get my thoughts kind of gathered and I can just binge watch shows and not feel guilty from being like a lazy boy. I love flying. Like every single time I fly, it feels like the very first time when I was a little boy going on to a trip. It just doesn't get old for me. I love it. Ready? So Nick has to go pee. <gasps> And now <laughs> Ryan's gonna try to squeeze the pee out. I'm trying to make a pee. Hey, oh, Nick. I tickled, I tickled. <laughs> How long have you been holding it? I tickled. How long have you been holding it? I'm tickling too much. Oh my gosh. Today the hard pee. work we have to do in this place. I tried to stop him. Yeah, and I would call that workplace abuse where you wouldn't let the guy pee pee. God damn it, man. I'm gonna call OSHA because he can't, like. Well, OSHA. they're not your employees. Nope. No one's an employee here. No one's an employee here. <laughs> hey, Mike, hey, you're drinking on a job and I can't say anything because you're not an employee. We're not employees. Someone typed that the assets got unfrozen. I didn't even know that. That's yep. tight. All right, so Ryan is pranking um, Nick again and he's got this light up thing on the bottom of his car and we're going to see him off and put it on, turn it on right now. Oh, wait, no, you're not coming. I uh, will be your one. All right, man. Bumper, bro? Nah. <laughs> Hi. Damn it, you can't really see Hi. it. But it's lit up right <laughs> under there. His car, you can kind of see it glowing. It's too light right now, but the whole bottom of his car. <laughs> I don't care what it is, but look good. <laughs> See ya! It's gonna be fucking lit the fuck up when he gets home. <laughs> he doesn't have any idea. The bottom of the car is gonna be glowing. <laughs> so he, Ryan look at that look shit. Look at that. <laughs> Did he find it? Wait, no <laughs> <laughs> he knows! He knows! Damn it! Damn it! Well, we got out a little too early thanks to Anthony over here, but it was too damn early where it's summer right now and then the sun is too out. But it would have been nicer if it was dark as hell. But by the time he gets home, he'll be seeing that shit lit the fuck up. Can is pretty, uh, very <laughs> legit. He's, got one that says He's an voice, ally. Bro. Popsicle break. <laughs> Popsicle break. <laughs> Bust out your popsicle, dude. Woo, 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 woo. Popsicle. Which place feels like home the most? Okay, so the craziest thing started happening when I started living in these three cities. Every single time, it felt like I was going home. It's the weirdest feeling. So like, I got so used to it and I have these dwelling units, right? So it's a mix of feeling like I'm going on a trip, but then I'm going back home and I get to relax and then it just starts all over again. And it's the weirdest feeling. How many miles have you completed? So check this out. This is just my Hawaiian Airlines alone and it looks like I did 43,000 miles this year. And it's weird because it says 2025 and obviously we're not in the future right now, but like this is for qualifying for next year. You have to like hit these like points and I'm platinum baby. And what's cool about like platinum membership on Hawaiian Airlines, I get like four check-in bags for free, which is really handy. Cause like, if I have to bring some special stuff here, um, I can just load up matcha or super expensive shipping things. And I can just put it in my suitcase and I can bring it over. Uh, but the best part of it is the free upgrades. I pretty much always get like an economy ticket and I'm always getting some premium seating. So that's like one of the coolest things. And the flying hack stuff, well, check this out. I, I'm pretty much at this point now, just like in and out of airports. 
I get in and I timed it so good to where like, I'm always right about to miss my flight, but I get on board. But when I did travel a lot and I like to get to the airport early or like I would just hang out at airport lounges or whatever, this is your lifesaver right here. You don't gotta get the whole set, but like just bring a power strip with you everywhere because when you're, especially if you're traveling in a group, your friends are gonna love you and you're gonna have things you wanna charge up and all that, but yeah, that's the best airport hack I could think of that worked out really well for me. We are at the Thai market. Thai market, look at it. Fear everyone, sneak peek shirt. After JK News, we like to come out here and get some yummy food. They have Thai market three times a week, every single week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's pretty sick. Just look at that big old walk. Oh, don't walk around, man. Don't walk around. Woo! <laughs> you know, it's so nice here. It just reminds me of Asia, dude. Woo! Fire! So that's what I ordered right there. Lao style sour sausage. Woo, that looks good. They have fun little games here. They got some musical chairs going on. Oh, I'm so excited. I got some sour lao sausage and i got crispy rice right here Whoa. what did you get ken i got uh kapow 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 thai style what's exciting about these type of food places is you can always come back and try different things every single time and each vendor would have multiple items so you just got to make your rounds over and over so far I had bowl noodles here. We also did a spicy challenge with Steve. That's about to be coming out on Just Kidding News. Uh, it's gonna be a fun adventure. They have raw ginger. And you eat it with the sour sauce. Mmm. Crispy rice. Crispy. Oh, look at that. Mmm. Mm. Oh, that's spicy. I told them medium spicy. Oh, that's spicy. Dude, they don't play around with medium. No, though. dude. Their medium is like... It's no joke, but maybe he thought I could take it because I'm Asian. Also, since we've been paying the cash for everything, it's all free, right? Mmm. I like it. It's spicy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, when you bite into the meat or whatever's in there, yeah. it gets spicy. It's good stuff, though. Wow. Oh man, that's a little too spicy. Definitely stop by this stand if you guys have a chance. They got really good boat noodles and cow piak, if you know what that is. Oh, Alright, check this out. Yeah. 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 Crispy yeah. Fresh yeah. Freshly like made mara. Ooh. Let's give it a try. Wow, mm. look at this piece. Mmm. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Wow, that's good stuff. And sticky rice you gotta have sticky rice thai dessert time we got pudding we got coconut cake pandan and it's gonna do the honors on and the rice pour. or the mango on the rice and the mango oh yeah oh my god all over the place thank you very much <laughs> how is it i love blue rice blue rice dude so good oh what's that i don't know thai pudding you know what's funny? Southeast Asian desserts always have a little bit of salt in their pudding. It's good. I used to hate it when I was trying it. It was shocking, but now I love it. it have you ever pandan. heard of people saying adding salt to things makes it sweeter? Yeah, like salt on a watermelon. Mm. Oh, dude, that one was mm. dripping. Mm. You got to do it with the sticky rice on the coconut. I love tastes like lady boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you like about each state? Like, if you could combine certain aspects from all three into a Jomalia continent. All right, number one, Nevada, or should I say Las Vegas? No state income tax, okay? When you start adulting, 10% is a lot of money. If you're making 100 grand, that's 10 grand a year. Let's talk about the fun stuff. The Las Vegas Strip, Entertainment Central. Like all of the same concerts that we have in LA, they have a lot of the artists doing tours and coming in anyway. There's just hella good food. There's always things to do. And even outside of the Strip, there's just a lot, like whether you do nature stuff, there's just a lot of things to keep you entertained. 
Now the crappiest part would just be how hot it gets and how dry it gets. But other than that, man, you could live pretty damn good. The prices are good. But if you're from LA or California, if you move out of the state, everywhere is good. Hawaii, on the other hand, you just can't beat the nature. Like if you're a water person, just like me, if you enjoy hiking, for example, this morning, right? I got up at six. I did a nice little mild like jog, jumped in the freaking ocean, swam. I was like, damn, this is crazy. Like this is my life every freaking day. Like everything takes like 10 minutes to get to. It's just a good environment with people that want to be active. So if you're into that stuff, I think Hawaii is perfect. You got a lot of places to hike. You got a lot of yummy food. The unfortunate thing is Vegas is a super big desert and Hawaii is a tropical paradise. I would add some moisture into Vegas and I would bring in the Las Vegas Strip into Hawaii if I could. LA on the other hand, that's a whole country right there. LA County now has about 10 million people and I'm a little bit biased because I grew up in LA. That's my home. It has every food you could think of because there's every ethnicity you could think of. And whatever you think of, the most authentic version of that culture's food, you could go visit. You wouldn't even have to leave LA. But I hate the traffic. I remember every single time I land, I'm like, ah, LA, I'm back home. And then by the time, you know, I get to my destination, what should have been a 30 minute drive was like a two hour drive. And I'm like, ah, I remember why I left LA. You're just like, ah. What am I doing with myself? And then this is why a lot of people that live in LA don't actually visit each other. But what I would do, all the good stuff without the crime, I would get all the theme parks, I would get the entertainment industry, I would bring all that and maybe I would just put it in Hawaii or something like that. I like Hawaii, but then I would say the bad part about it is it's so far from everything. You're on an island, so you get island fever. If I had my perfect dream land that I could construct together, this probably just sounds like Singapore to a lot of people because you got the Asian entertainment, you got a casino, you got a tropical paradise, but I've never been to Singapore. I've only been to Malaysia, so I could only dream. But that's basically what I would do.